In the last video, you got a glimpse of our app in its new refactored state. Unfortunately, the app is just a collection of labels. While text can certainly be helpful, this app should feature photos of all the national parks. We'll get to that now while exploring more about collection view cells. Let's start by improving the appearance of that custom collection view cell so that it displays an image for the national park instead of just a boring old label. Delete the label, then drag an image view into the green subview. Make sure you don't add it to the main view of the cell. Next, set up auto layout so that the image view has zero padding all around it. If your image view doesn't fit the size of the cell, then drag out the frame and then update the constraints to match it. One final bit of setup here. In the document outline, make sure that the new image view is behind the selection image in the view hierarchy. The selection circle would not appear even in editing mode if it was covered up by the image view. Okay, that completes our storyboard layout. Now we can add some code to the collection view cell class to handle displaying of the new image. Open collection view cell .swift and add an outlet for the image. At this point, we're just going to leave the outlet for the title label here. I have it on good authority, they'll come in handy soon. You may have noticed that the other outlets that we made did not have the private attribute, but this new one does. When we did a custom collection view cell last time, we set up the cell in the view controller and that's how this starter project is still set up. However, it's better to have an object handle all the functionality related to that object within the object itself. Your collection view cell subclass is an object, so it would be better to have the cell set itself up rather than ask the view controller to do it. And if all the information set up happens in the cell itself, you can now set up all the outlets to private. Nothing else needs to know about these outlets. Now we can prepare to populate that image view. Add a property to this collection view cell class to hold the data that this cell is displaying. Use a did set observer whenever this value changes and then update the information displayed by the cell. Right now, this just loads an image for the current park data object if the park property is not nil. Let's take a moment to talk about how collection view cells work. Collection view cells behave very much like cells on a table view. A cell represents a single data item and employs the same cell reuse strategies as table views. A collection view only instantiates enough cells to display the items that are currently visible. When you scroll through a collection view, it recycles the cells which scrolled out of view and reuses them to display items which have newly become visible. So as you might expect, collection view cells have a method named prepare for reuse, which can be overridden to set up recycled views just before they're displayed again. For the sake of completeness and safety, let's override the cells prepare for reuse method to remove any image currently being displayed when a cell is recycled. Time to hook up the outlet. Switch to the main.storyboard and select the prototype cell in the main scene. Switch to the connection inspector and drag the main image to the image view in the prototype cell. That's all the work that's necessary to set up your custom collection view cell to display an image, but we still need to pass the relevant data to the cell. Open main view controller.swift and find collection view cell for item at.
you've just called the method on the data source park for item at index path to fetch the park at any given index path and assign it to the park property on the cell. And then set the is editing property on the cell as before. Build and run the project. Looks good, but the spacing between the cells might not be the best approach when you have a bunch of images displaying in a collection view. Thankfully, it's a quick change. Remember that the new layout has a view which contains all other information views, such as the image and the selection indicator. This image has a padding of two points on all sides. All you need to do is change the auto layout constraints on this image to remove the padding. In the storyboard, select the green view in the prototype cell, and in the size inspector, change the four constraint constants to zero for all sides. Build and run one more time. Wall-to-wall -wall park images.